One Owner Car Guy, oneownercarguy.com. Make daily videos and all kinds of vlogs and car videos. But these videos right here, the first minute will be me yapping here, but it's about coronavirus and the town hall meeting that Congressman Gio Forte, Gianna Forte, I can't say his name. Sorry, awesome guy, did some awesome telephone Q&A here with a doctor. It got way too windy out there and my battery died. So I'm gonna do it here in the little, it's the kids stay at home school spot. So the questions in this particular one, phone call, is can I get coronavirus again? Can I be carrying it and not know it? Have I already had it? Why is this more important than the flu? There's a question in here about hand sanitizer. And then one really cool one was the difference between shelter in place, stay at home, a quarantine, a lockdown. There's like four or five terms floating around out there nowadays. And they want a little bit of clarity on what to do during these different announcements or whatever. So this is it. Enjoy. I do videos every day. Make sure and subscribe. All kinds of cool stuff. Here we go. Our next question is going to come from Jenny in Missoula. Go ahead, Jenny. You're on line. Hello, and good morning, Hi. and thank you so much Hi. for, you know, having a conversation with us people here in Montana. The question I had You're very welcome. for the doctor, and I was just wondering, with the COVID-19 being so of an epidemic right now, and there's a lot of questions, you know, that friends and family keep on asking, like, hey, you know, we, we might have been carrying it. We might have been having it or we already had it. And then people are asking you, like, could it stay dormant and then come back full force this coming fall a little bit worse? Is there such a possibility, even though that we're all doing really good with the shutdown and six feet, you know, and just not being around people, and that can sort of, like, dim the prospects of it coming back, but is there a possibility? Okay, thank you, Jenny. I think, uh, Dr. Duncan, there's two questions there. One is, can somebody, you know, have it but not have any symptoms? And then secondly, are, are we at risk of a reoccurrence in the fall or at some point in the future? Thank you, Congressman. Yeah, the first, to the first question, yes, somebody can, unfortunately, like a lot of other viruses, can carry COVID-19 without having any symptoms. Um, and so I have no idea if they have it and could be spreading it. So that's why right now this it's so important to try to stay distant from each other. Even if you don't have symptoms, you could be carrying it um, if you've been exposed. To the second question, some of our national public health officials who have been trusted voices during this pandemic have been concerned that we may see this virus come back again, um, whether it's this summer, this fall, and that's why it's important to try to buy some of that time now to develop the treatments that I had referenced and, and hopefully develop a vaccine so that uh, we can address this if, if and when the virus comes back. But I think there's thinking that, yes, it probably will be with us for a while. Diane, I think we, as, as more and more people get this, there's some basic immunity that builds up in the population, as I understand it, doctor. There are some... Yeah. Uh, antibodies that are already in clinical trials, uh, we have to make sure they're safe. But as you say, the more time we have, uh, I'm, I'm betting on American ingenuity to find a solution here, but we just have to get through this together. So thank you. Um, exactly. The next question, again, yep, if we, uh, uh, star three, if you have a question, and next we'll go to Art in Helena. Go ahead, Art. Good morning. This is a question for the doctor. Um, the CDC okay. has the CDC estimates that from October of 19 through March of 2020, there have been 38 million to 54 million cases of flu and 24,000 to 62,000 deaths. How come, what, what is making the, corona, the COVID-19 virus three times or four times more um, transmittable than the, the flu? Why are we treating COVID-19 more important than the flu? I'm just curious. Doctor? I, I think that's a great question, and I think a very valid one. I, I think there are several differences between influenza and COVID-19. I think you point out very 
legitimately that influenza is still something that we we have in our midst and we need to respect. I think the difference between influenza and COVID-19 is that even though the flu virus does change a bit from year to year, we know more about it. Um, we have a vaccination for it. We have the ability to try to keep up with that particular virus and how it changes from year to year and then try to develop the vaccine um, to, to prevent it. And then um, we also understand a little bit more about how to uh, treat it and have some medications to do that. COVID-19 is a novel or a new virus, so we're scrambling to try to learn more about it. And like the congressman just said, we also don't have people who have immunity. I think there are probably more people out there either from um, their own natural immunity or getting the vaccine for influenza. We have more immunity in, in the population. We don't have any immunity right now from COVID-19. And I think that's what makes the two so different and from a public health perspective right now. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Art. Uh, and next, again, star three if you have a question. And again, this is Greg Gianforte, your congressman, along with Dr. Heidi Duncan, family physician and medical director at the Billings Clinic, answering your questions about COVID-19, how do we prevent the spread, and what's the federal government doing to help you get back on your feet? She wants to know and, uh, about the effectiveness uh, of hand sanitizer. We wash as soon as we get home. My but, battery went but down. I, I worry if it's effective or not. Dr. Duncan? Yes, thank you for that. So the guidelines from the CDC say that the hand sanit as long as the hand sanitizer is at least 60% alcohol, it should be effective. Um, and it's better than nothing. Like you said, the hand washing first and foremost, but when you're out and about and it's not practical to hand wash right away, I think hand sanitizer is a next best step as long as it has the right amount of alcohol. And Dr. Fum? Correct. Uh the virus can actually live on hard surfaces for a period of time. And so doorknobs, uh, entrance ways, uh, they could be carriers. And if you get it on your hand and then go sanitize or wash them well uh, and don't touch your face, that should take care of it. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, great. Thank you. So be careful out there. A star three, if you have a question. And now we'll go to Angela in Whitefish. Go ahead, Angela. Yes, my husband is an independent construction contractor and runs yes. this as an LLC. Will he be eligible at any point for unemployment? Yes. Uh, this is a very important provision uh, in this CARES Act. Uh, the unemployment provisions have been extended to people that historically have not qualified for uh, unemployment. So if, let's say you're, uh, uh, take, a, take the, the the case that's farthest away from where we've been before, a sole proprietorship. Uh, I, I, an example that came up in Bozeman recently was a, a gal who is, uh, she does nails. Uh, she's a sole proprietorship. She's had a lot of cancellations of uh, visits because people aren't coming in, so her income has dropped off. Uh, she now qualifies for unemployment under these new provisions. Uh, your husband as an independent contractor would also qualify. Uh, he should, uh, if he's lost business because of this, he should inquire about unemployment coverage from the state of Montana. And now we'll go to, again, star three, if you have a question, uh, we'll go to Bern uh, Bernadine. Uh, and what is your question, Bernadine? Well, thank you, Greg. For we'll now go to Hannah in Helena. Go ahead, Hannah. We're Camera glitch, asking about long profit. Like that. In Montana, by Nine providing five. really important services to Montana, like Alzheimer's Association, American Cancer Society, those kinds of folks, are there any plans to address that problem, either in this legislation that's moving now or in future legislation? There probably will be future legislation, but the, the assistance to nonprofits that I spoke about earlier uh, is available to all organizations up to 500 employees. So that covers the vast majority of nonprofits in the state of Montana and allowing them, because the nonprofits are doing vital work. Uh, in fact, I have a call next week with nonprofits across the, the state to kind of explain how you get these benefits. But again, if you're 500 employees or less, you qualify for these SBA 7A loans from your local bank or credit union 
And, I, and this is, again, a lifeline to nonprofits and small business and farmers and ranchers to make sure they stay on their feet to get through this. Um, our next uh, question is from Raya, an immigrant. Go ahead, Raya. Um, if children have had uh, these same symptoms and they have had high fevers and, and then they have recovered, are they building immunity or are they still able to get it second time or are they still contaminating others or, or if, what do we say? But I mean, we are grandparents and then their friends and so on. We have had actually in January already uh, like a two-week period when everybody was ill. I mean, the children were ill. So I okay. wonder. Good question, Ryan. So, so this question is, if, if people get the disease, get the virus, and recover, are they immune? Dr. Duncan, what would you say to Raya, an immigrant? Yes, I would say, again, I, we, we think so. We're still trying to understand, um, again, how this particular virus behaves. We do know that um, with other viruses, some people can get it and build some immunity, but may get a second time other viruses. You get it once and you don't, and your immunity is good. So we're still trying to understand a little bit about COVID-19 and exactly um, how long you do build an immunity to it. Um, certainly, in general, um, in terms of the, I also heard part of your question was maybe how long could you be contagious after you have something. Um, we're, we think that people can carry um, the virus for a while before they develop symptoms. So right now the general recommendation is that you think you've been exposed to COVID-19 to self-quarantine for 14 days um, because most people will develop symptoms by that 14 days. With other viruses like influenza that create fever and similar appearing symptoms to COVID-19, we are advising that people, again, kind of self-quarantine if they can, stay at home, and wait and to go back out and, and until they're at least 24 hours without a fever, without any medication for fever. And, and doctor, if you self-quarantine for 14 days and at the end of that period you don't have any symptoms, uh, you, you should be good. Is that correct? That's what we're, that's what we understand. I, we may learn something different as time goes on, but for now, that's under the general principle that people are applying, based on what we understand. Good, good. Well, um, we have one last question, but I want to thank everybody for joining us here on this statewide town hall. Uh, Dr. Heidi Duncan, medical director at the Billings Clinic, myself, Greg Gianforte. We've enjoyed taking your questions, and we'll take a last question from Kevin in Hamilton. Go ahead, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, you're on. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yep. Good. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. As um, a small business owner, it, it seemed, uh, deemed an essential business, I, I've got a lot of questions uh, from my employees about uh, safely getting to and from work and wondering, you know, if they're going to be in trouble for trying to get to work. Um, other things are, you know, workplace safety and the social distancing where we've got that in place and are practicing that. But they're also, you know, quite concerned about what if we're not able to continue to work, but what can we do for them there? And, and frankly, as a business owner, I've seen about a 75% drop in business over the last three weeks and uh, what's going to be available for the small business owners out there that uh, aren't able uh, to, uh, you know, continue to maintain their current status. Um, I guess I'll throw one more thing in there that I haven't heard anybody ask, but is this going to be an annual thing now? Um, what are we doing to look to the future to um, prevent this from happening again? So, Kevin, let me peel your questions apart there a little bit. There were three sections. The uh, first one was how do your workers, if they're essential, uh, get to work and get home safely? Um, I'll let the Dr. Duncan
Duncan address that, and then I'll talk about the relief that's available. And you may also, Dr. Duncan, may want to comment on are we going to be living with this from now on, uh, if you would, Dr. Duncan. Right. No, I, I think from the to and from work, I, there's, there's two aspects to that I think you're asking. Uh, thankfully, we don't have a lot of public transportation here where people have to rely on getting back to work on, forced to work on subways. Um, I, my impression is there's not going to be strict enforcement if you're out on the road and stopping you to say, are you going to work or not? Um, so hopefully people just be self-regulating that way. Um, I think going back and forth in our cars is, is perfectly safe from a viral transmission standpoint. Um, over time, yeah, hopefully more and more of us will get immunity. And my hope, which will help all of us, I think, understand a little bit more about who, um, who is, if we have this coming up cyclically in future years, which we probably will, we'll develop some immunity to it. And being able to tell who is immune to it by being able to do blood tests will really help us all have, I think, a little bigger sense of, of peace about whether or not we're going to be at risk personally. That's a little ways off yet. And then again, over time, hopefully, in addition to that natural immunity that happens, we'll also be able to develop um, vaccines and other things to to fight the virus itself as well. So we don't have to go through quite this level of, of shutdown every every flu or COVID season, if you will. Yeah, well, and that's, that's, I'm, I'm betting on American ingenuity to solve this, but we have to get through this first crisis. And that's why this CARES package that the House has, Kevin, to address the second half of your question, these 7A loans, if you had a slowdown in business, uh, these loans are really a grant program to help you continue to pay your payroll. I would encourage you to talk to your local banker about that. If you're a sole proprietor, uh, for other people on the line, uh, there are expanded unemployment benefits. And for individuals, seniors, anyone with lower income, there's going to be a direct cash payment of $1,200 per person. So all these elements are in this $2 trillion package that I'm getting a notice uh, from my chief of staff here that I have to go to the floor right now and vote on it. Uh, so I just want to I want to thank Dr. Heidi Duncan again for sharing her wisdom with us uh, from the Billings Clinic. Greg Gianforte, I um, want to thank you for the privilege of serving you. Uh, hopefully this call was helpful to you. If you have additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our offices, and I'll end where I started. By working together, we're going to get through this. We're going to get back on our feet. The virus will pass, and we'll get back to some form of normalcy. So I know Montanans are resilient. Uh, we'll get through this. Thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye.